Okay guys, this is Josh with NWA3D. I'm just showing you how I'm trying to make a TPU compatible extruder for the CR10, A31, or CR7, A5. This is the STL for the stock extruder bracket. You can see it's it's a, got a place here for a Bowden tube coupler, and then it has a narrow passageway here for just filament. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, subtract a portion in order to make it uh, big enough to slide a little piece of Bowden tube into. So I'm just going to, I put in a cylinder there already for the sake of time, and then I'm going to subtract, and then I'm going to subtract out that tube there and create this hole. Now that now we should be able to put a piece of PTFE tubing in that slot and then the extruder gear goes here and the idler pulley goes here and we should be able to clip that Bowden tube at an angle to kind of create a Flexion extruder type system. I decided to go with this route instead of trying to CAD design a point into the model because I figure it would be really hard to print like that point and the Bowden tube system would work really well and it would also allow you to replace the PTFE uh, piece that's in there. So this here is my super custom CR7A5. It has a very sim similar extruder to the A31. And I have already printed out and put in one of those uh, extruders like extruder brackets. I printed it out in carbon fiber infused PLA and you can see in the top there I have a little piece of Bowden tube or a little piece of PTFE in there that's kind of clipped off at an angle. Here is a kind of a little piece here that's a sort of a rejected piece so you can kind of see what not to do I guess but there's another little piece of tubing that I tried that didn't quite work. Just kind of cut at an angle so that it goes right in between the, the feeder gear and the idler pulley. And here you can see I'm printing out another one of those extruder brackets using the carbon fiber PLA. And as soon as that's done, I'm going to put it on the uh, A31 over there. Okay, so the part just came off the print bed. You can see it here. It's that carbon fiber PLA. It's pretty cool looking. And now we're going to try to stick this Bowden tube inside there. It's a little bit of PTFE tubing. So I'm just going to clip it off square and then just kind of round out the hole so it's not smashed. There we go. And then we're going to try to just feed this tube in there and it's a little bit snug so it takes a little work to get it started. So that's why I have these pliers here to kind of help. We should get it in there. It should just slide in and it's being a pain. Okay, almost got it. I want to make sure it's fully seated, so give it just a little bit more. There we go. So I kind of messed it up a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to cut that part off. So it's fully seated inside there. I don't, you really can't see because it's too dark. But yeah, it's in there good. So now we're going to clip it off like this. So I try to do as extreme an angle as the flush shears will allow. So, because you want it to be as long as possible. So I'm going to trim that part side like that, and that side like that. So now we have a little PTFE tube sort of insert there. And kind of round out that hole there. We can. I'll use this filament maybe to round it out. There we go. 
So now it's nice and round. And ready to print some TPU. So now we're going to install this new extruder bracket. For the sake of time, I already took off the old one. It's pretty straightforward. There are just four screws holding it in place. So you just put the Bowden tube coupler back on there. And it's okay if it kind of gets sort of weird, cross-threaded a little bit. It'll straighten out in the end because this is soft plastic. This isn't like metal, so it's kind of ta self-tapping as it goes in. You'll see it straightens out here in the end. And you don't want to over-tighten it. You just want to snug it up so that it squares up like that. And then, now that it's nice and snug, you're, that, that portion's installed. So the next thing I like to do is put this uh, extruder arm back on. And these 3D printed holes are just a little bit smaller. So I like to set this screw first and then sort of spin it in place to kind of help get, make that hole a little bit uh, bigger like that. That way the back of the screw just sits there and spins. That way it'll pull up the extruder whenever I bring it up. So the extruder just fits up under here and you can line up the hole and then use these screws to set it in place. I don't like to tighten it just yet because uh, we can adjust some different things and if you don't put the spring in you can move the, the tension arm out of the way so you can get to this screw. We're just setting it. We're not actually going to tighten it up just yet. Tighten that one up. Back it off just a piece so we can still move. to make sure that everything will touch and it looks like it will if you cut this Bowden tube piece a little bit the PTFE tube a little bit too thick then the pulley can't touch the gear and you really want it to be able to touch the gear so it can get the maximum amount of tension on your filament so as long as everything's lined up there and it appears to be you can go ahead and tighten these down they just need to be snug you don't need to go crazy it's a plastic 3D printed part with an aluminum stepper motor behind it, so if you get too crazy, you'll crush things or strip things out. And then we put in the, put in the spring, and this is a little tricky. I like to use bent nose pliers for this. So I like to compress the spring, and then well, let's see if I can get it situated here so you can see it. Get it set on the 3D printed knob first, and then let it go. And there you are, nice and tight. So now I'm going to load up this green TPU here, clip off the end, so make sure it feeds through, make sure there's no obstruction there, it's a little tight. wants to miss that coupler to one side or the little insert so I might need to put an allen key through there kind of straighten out that hole a little bit make sure it's not in the way too much okay let's try that again if this doesn't work, I'll just cut the TPU at an angle and see if it catches that way. 
Alright, it appears to be feeding now. Let's see if it goes all the way in. Okay, good. I don't know if you can see it, it's very slight, but it's it's all the way up to here now. So there we go. Looks like a successful install. Now I just need to start up my prep file so everything can start heating. And then we'll see if it functions the way it should. Okay, so right now <clears throat> I just told it to extrude some filament. And what I'm looking for is any gaps where the filament might bend one way or the other and so far I'm not seeing any so that's good and also it doesn't seem like the uh, pulley or the drive gear are impeded in any way so let's see what our extrusion actually looks like it looks pretty solid it's pretty consistent I know it's hard to see because of the lighting but it looks really consistent and smooth which means we're getting a good bite on that TPU. So now we're going to try to start a print. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. The print's just starting. So it's taken a little bit of time to prime the nozzle. So it appears to be laying down a decent bead. Stuck to the plate decently. This is just a skirt. So it's a little bit thinner than the first layer might be. Yeah, it's looking really promising. Let's go up here and look at the extruder and make sure it's not acting up or being weird. But it appears to be working just fine. And that is really fast for TPU. I don't know if uh, you've ever tried to print TPU with the stock extruder, but it likes to wrap around the gear or get stuck on the pulley. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to let this print go, and then we'll find out how good or bad it is later. So my print is still doing well. I'm still laying down plastic. Little dribbles there, stuff like that. Nothing major. But I wanted to show something to you. So I marked my idler pulley with a sharpie, and as you can see right here, the uh, idler is not moving, but the gear is, and that's because the filament has built up enough pressure that it's just kind of sitting there waiting for pressure to release. And then it starts moving again. And if we hadn't had that little insert in there, then that would have caused a kink in the TPU and it would have gone one side to the other and it wouldn't be going into the extruder very well. So, I would say that this design definitely works. I mean, it's not ideal that my feed rate isn't calibrated to the point that that is balancing the pressure but I think that has more to do with my bed leveling than my actual feed rate. So let me pull the lamp down here real quick. You can see it's under extruding that first layer because that gear is slipping and we're actually missing steps on the extruder. But it's not clogging and it's not shutting down. So that's a good thing. So I'm gonna adjust my feed rate a little bit and see if slowing it down doesn't make a more consistent line. You can hear that speed change kicking in. So I'm going to look up here and see if there's any change on my idler. Looks like it's moving a lot more consistently with the gear. So maybe we're just trying to go a little bit too fast. Especially when you print TPU with a Bowden tube. Now oh, it's starting to stall there. But when you print TPU with a Bowden tube, it actually builds up tension all inside the tube here. 
and then it gradually releases that pressure out of the nozzle. Yeah. It's a little better, but it's not what it needs to be. Let's look at the print real quick. No, I really can't see. Let's see if I can see over here. Yeah, you can kind of see a little bit better lines under there. They're more consistent anyway. But yeah, that's part of that trouble with printing with TPU. It, uh, it's a real bugger to extrude.